Um, so one of the things that you're going to have to do on the AP exam is you're going to have to look at code that is recursive and is used for searching and sorting. Now, we covered searching and sorting a while back, and I need to do some review with you on this searching and sorting. Uh, who can uh, remind me, what are the two searches that we studied in this course? So imagine you have an array, and you want to find if a certain number is in the array or not. So who can raise their hand and suggest one of the two search methods that we studied to do that? Anyone? Sequential search. So in a sequential search, we simply look at the first element, see if it matches our number, then look at the next one, the next one, the next one, and we just go through that. And we said that if we had N elements, in the worst case scenario, we would have to search N items before either finding it or concluding that it's not contained inside of our array. Does anybody remember the other search technique that we studied in this class? The cut it in half technique. So it has two different names. It's called either a bisection or binary search. What did we say had to be an important characteristic of the array if we were going to use a binary search? Does someone remember? We have to do something to the array first before we can do a bisection search on it. Ms. Uh, Sujan? It has to be already sorted. And so <clears throat> there are two ways that we can do a bisection search. Let me show you this bisection search algorithm. Now, I'm looking at this Geeks for Geeks site. And uh, this site, I like this site because one of the nice things about it is that they they show you the, the algorithm. And then underneath, they give you the opportunity to look at how that algorithm might be impl implemented in all these different languages. So depending on what language you can speak, you can just click on it. You can see here's a Python solution. We typically work with the Java solutions. So this is a nice little site. Now, looking back up here, uh, this is not any particular language. This is just pseudocode. Now, this is just pseudocode. And the idea behind pseudocode is that it's not any particular language. So you can see here from this pseudocode, here is a binary search algorithm. And the first piece of pseudocode that's shown here is how you would write binary search using an iteration method. That means using a loop. And right now, if you hadn't learned any recursion yet, and I asked you to write a bi binary or bisection search, I would expect you to implement something similar to this algorithm right here. You can see there's a loop here. And you can see that when the algorithm is closed, here's the array that you're searching. Here is the item that you're searching for. And here is the range on the array that you want to search for. Typically, it would be the whole array. Uh, for the loop part, this, these uh, parameters are less important, but you'll see they're more important for the, uh, for, for the bisections, uh, for the uh, recursive version. Anyway, you can see you're going to calculate the midpoint of the array, split the array into two pieces, and then you're going to figure out if the one you're looking for, the item you're looking for X, is on the right-hand side or the left-hand side. And then you're going to keep doing this over and over until you either find the item you're looking for or conclude that it's not in the array. So this is a traditional loop solution. Uh, one of the reasons we're mentioning uh, this algorithm again in, under the recursive section here in Unit 10 is that binary search is usually not done this way. Uh, it's usually not done this way using a loop. It's usually done using a recursive algorithm like this. And what's different here uh, versus this one up here, you can see this is a straight loop, but down here you can see that binary search is being called here uh, from inside binary search. So there is a recursive algorithm right here. And what's happening is similar. You're seeing that you're splitting the array into two pieces, but then what you're doing is you're reformatting the problem to simply call binary search again. Who can tell me what is the purpose of this if statement right here? we would turn false. What would happen, sir, if this wasn't here? It would go infinite. So this is the base case. See that? This is the base case. This is the other base case, by the way. This is where we find it. This is where we don't find it. So those are the two base cases. So you can see that's important. Every recursive algorithm has to have at least one base case. So this is binary search. Now, I want to be clear. They're not going to ask you to write binary search using a 
a uh, recursive algorithm on the AP exam, more likely what will happen on the AP is that the binary search will be shown to you without the names being given. They'll call this mystery or something like that on a um, multiple choice question. And they'll either ask you to identify what the method does or they'll ask you some aspect about it that you have to figure out, like how many times will it be called or something like that. So you need to be able to recognize this algorithm. Now, let me just show you what this looks like in Java. Here you can see it's similar to the pseudocode. And here you can also see that there are these two recursive cases, depending on whether the item you're looking for is going to be on the left side of the array or the right half side of the array. So just have a brief look at this. You can see here as we're splitting the array into two pieces. This is a surprising a little bit more complicated than you might have thought. And the reason for that is that you're only working with part of the array now, part of the array. And it's too much trouble to copy the array into smaller and smaller halves. So what we do instead is we keep the array as it is, and we simply change the L and the R to indicate what section of the array we're interested in. That's much more efficient than making a copy of the array each time we split it. Anyway, you need to be able to recognize code like this to see what it does when it's uh, being used in a recursive fashion. So that's all I have for you on binary search. Let's look at the sorting algorithms. So who can remember what are the sorting algorithms that we studied here? Let me, and we're going to talk a little bit about the sorting algorithms. Okay, so we're going to discuss the sorting algorithms that we've studied so far in this course. Who, Mr. Gabe, can you name one of the sorting algorithms we've learned so far this year, sir? So we learned bubble sort. And by any chance, sir, do you happen to remember uh, if I have N items, how many operations or comparisons am I going to need to do in a bubble sort? It's going to be N square. Does anybody remember one of the other sorting algorithms that we've studied? Insertion sort. It's only N under a very specific situation. Does anybody remember the special case where insertion sort can reduce to O of N. If the original list is already sorted and you're just adding one more item to it, then it's O of N. But what if it, the original list is not sorted? What if you have to sort every element? What is the big O then? Anybody remember? It's also N square. And so you can see there's not much advantage to this. The reason we teach bubble sort is because it's easy. The reason we teach insertion sort is that it's useful under this scenario where we most of the list is already sorted. Uh, we learned a couple other ones in this course. We learned selection sort, and that also is O of N square. Now, the disadvantage of these algorithms is that they're slow. One, the advantage is that they're relatively easy to write and they don't take up a lot of memory. So that's the trade-off there. And then after that, we learned another sorting algorithm that was much faster but more complicated. It was called merge sort. And I'm going to review merge sort with you today because it's going to be appropriate important for the AP exam. So I'm going to call this n log n as the speed of the algorithm. You can see that n log n is faster or increases at a slower rate than uh, n square. And so if I have a graph, okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw a little graph and it's going to show on the x axis, it's going to show the number of elements n. And then on the y axis, I'm going to show the amount of time it takes for the algorithm to complete. And you can see here that the n log n algorithm shown in green is going to be more efficient than the n square algorithms that we have up here. So basically merge sort works faster than the other sorts. Now there's one other algorithm that we have not discussed, which is actually the most popular sort to use. Uh, that's called quick sort. Why quick sort is one word and merge sort is two words. I, I've never had an English teacher be able to explain it to me. Anyway, this is also uh, O of N log N. There are some degenerate cases where it can take slightly longer, but we're not going to get into that now. Uh, but basically what I'm trying to say is that these are the good algorithms and these are the bad algorithms in terms of speed. So you might ask yourself, 
what's bad about these two? Well, they're extremely complicated, and there's one thing that makes them complicated. Can anyone guess what that is? Yes, these are recursive algorithms, and so these are a little bit harder to implement. Now, we're not going to get into quicksort. We're not going to code either of these algorithms this year. If you stay with me next year for data structures, we will code both of these. Uh, however, this year you just need to be able to recognize merge sort on a test. In other words, if they give it to you as a multiple choice question, you need to be able to look at it and say, oh, they're doing a merge sort there. So let's have a quick look at what merge sort looks like. Once again, I'm going to show you the algorithm using pseudocode first. And you can see what we do is we uh, split the array into two pieces. We call the algorithm recursively twice to sort each half and then we take the two halves and then we merge them together now in case it's not so clear to you what this means i know it's been a while since we've discussed it uh, i think i can jar your memory by showing you this brief little video of what merge sort looks and sounds like Hopefully from that video, you can understand the merge sorts recursive nature. Now, going back to our code, here's an example. This was the general algorithm. Let's look at what the Java looks like. It looks extremely similar to this. And once again, you can see you can pick whatever language you want to see the merge sort in. Here you can see it's calling the merge. This is the main merge sort method. And here we are creating temporary arrays to split the original array into two pieces. And we're copying the original array into the two pieces here. And then here, we're getting to the actual sort part of the algorithm where we make two recursive calls. And then once they're finished, we take the two pieces that have been sorted and we merge them together. And we just keep doing this repeatedly until the entire array is sorted. And so that's basically, this is the test code for the merge sort. So that's basically what a merge sort looks like. If you're presented with this code on an AP exam, they're not gonna label it as uh, merge or sort. They're gonna give you some mystery name and you have to try to figure out what's going on.